If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question first on your own before listening on. In part A, we'll draw the free body diagram, which will show the forces acting on the boat, which we can represent as this black dot. Perhaps the most obvious force is the gravitational force, which is pulling the boat downward, and we can label that force Fg. We also have a drag force that is opposing the motion of the boat. So if we assume the boat is moving to the right, then the drag force would point in the opposite direction, and so we can label that. We have the force exerted by the engine, which we can call Fe. And then since the boat is pressing against the water surface, the water would be pushing back up against the boat, and that is typically called a normal force. And so this would be the correct answer to part A. In part B, we need to determine the magnitude of the forward force applied to the boat. So that would be this force right here, Fe. And to do that, what we can do is apply Newton's second law in the x direction. Now, Newton's second law in the x direction would tell us that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. We see there are two forces. There is the Fe force, and we can assume that it's pointing in the positive direction, since the rightward direction is typically positive. And then the Fd, because it's pointing in the leftward direction, would be negative. So we can write minus Fd. And we'll set that equal to the mass of the boat times its acceleration in the x direction. Now, we were not told directly the acceleration in the x direction, but we can use some of the information to find it. Because we know that the acceleration in the x direction is going to be the change in velocity of the boat divided by the change in time. And for change in velocity, we can actually write that as final velocity minus initial velocity. And we were told the final velocity of the boat was 2.5 meters per second, and the initial was zero since it's starting from rest. So we could plug in 2.5 for final, zero for initial, and then the time interval was five seconds. And if we come back over here and divide that out, we're gonna get 0.5 meters per second squared for the acceleration. So that's a number that we wanna keep in mind. And what we can actually do is come back to our force equation and we can plug in the acceleration, the mass, as well as the value of Fd. And then what we could do perhaps is multiply the two quantities on the right hand side, which gives us 600 newtons. And then we can add this 500 newtons over to the other side. And so Fe turns out to be 600 plus the 500 newtons. And of course that's going to give us 1100 newtons for the force that the engine exerts on the boat in the forward direction. So this is the correct answer to part B. Now for the power exerted by the engine, we know that that's going to be the work done by the engine divided by the time interval. We also know that work that's done by the boat's engine would be the force applied by the engine multiplied by the displacement that the boat has traveled. For the displacement, we can turn back to kinematics and find that. We know that displacement is equal to initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. The initial velocity again was zero, so that term would drop out, and that would leave us with the expression one half at squared. So coming back to the power equation, we would have Fe multiplied by one half times acceleration times time squared, and then this would all be divided by the time. We could simplify this if we wish, but we could also plug in the known values. So we'll choose the latter approach. For Fe, we figured out that that was 1100 newtons. And then the acceleration again was 0.5. The time interval was the five seconds. Don't forget to square it up here in the numerator, and then we'll divide by five. And when you work that out, you should get 1,375, and the standard unit of power is watts. So this would be the correct answer to part C.